As always, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and give the question a shot before listening on one aspect of the picture that might be potentially confusing is where the picture appears to be allowing the water to jet out of the bottom of this bluish container. Truthfully, it would be better if they had drawn the opening in the container right at the very bottom. So just sort of assume that the water is actually spurting out at the very bottom of the container. Now, once we make that assumption, we're going to select two points within the blue colored fluid here. And we're going to select point one to be located at the surface of the fluid. We'll call that P1. And then we're going to select point P2 at the little opening at the bottom of the container. And what we'll be doing is applying Bernoulli's equation. We do have a moving fluid, so Bernoulli's equation would be applicable. And if we study those two points carefully, we would notice that at point one, the atmosphere is pressing down at the surface of the liquid right there. So we have atmospheric pressure being exerted at P1. But then at P2, because of the opening, we also have atmospheric pressure being exerted at that opening. And because the pressure P1 is equal to the pressure P2, these two terms in the equation would actually subtract out. They are equal if we subtract the P1 from both sides, they would cancel out because of course P1 minus P1 is zero. And since P2 is the same as P1, that would also go to zero. So we can greatly simplify our equation. Another way in which we can simplify our equation is to assume that at the surface of the liquid, the water is scarcely moving there. It's basically at rest. So we can say that the speed of the water at point one is approximately zero. And that means that this term right here is going to drop out of the equation as well. And it gets even better because at P2, what we're going to do is arbitrarily set that height to be our baseline height. Basically, our height is going to be zero there. So we're going to let y2 in the Bernoulli's equation equal zero. And that means that this term is going to drop out of the equation. So let's take a look at our simplified version of the equation next. And in fact, we have even better news because if we look at the simplified version of the equation, if we divide by the density of the fluid, then the density terms would actually cancel out. So we can simplify it yet again. Here is the simplified, most simplified version of the Bernoulli's equation, and it's important to take stock of what we're trying to actually solve for. We're trying to solve for the height h of the water level. Remember, we set the y2 to be zero. This is sort of our baseline height right here. And therefore, what we're really looking for is y1. We are looking for the height above y2 at which this water is filled. So that's actually what we're looking for. We're going to let the y1 equal h in our simplified equation. And since we're solving for that height h, we could actually divide both sides of the equation by g. And this isolates the quantity we're trying to figure out. And if we look at this version of the equation, we can see we have only two unknowns to plug in, and then we'll have our answer. In fact, g is a known value, of course. g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's all set. What we really need to figure out is v2. Now let's understand what v2 actually represents. We'll just clean up the picture a little bit here. Remember, we had labeled point P2 right at the opening of the container. And so what V2 would represent is the speed at which the water is being jetted out of that opening. So that's our V2 right there. And we need that in order to calculate the H. So this actually turns into a projectile motion question, which you studied several chapters earlier. So let's just understand the scenario a little bit further. We have the water jetting out at this point v2 and we need to figure out that value and so it's a projectile motion question we can start labeling some of the other dimensions here we know that this height is one meter and then we know that this horizontal distance is 0.6 meters and you might remember when you solved projectile motion questions that a useful way of calculating quantities was to create a table of sorts so let's go ahead and set up a table now in this table we have the initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, displacement, and then time. For displacement we, we have used delta x and delta y because displacement can take place in a horizontal and vertical direction, so they have different symbols. And now what we do is start labeling some known quantities. Now it's important to understand that at the very top of this projectile motion, the water is only moving horizontally, and therefore its initial vertical velocity or y velocity would be zero.
And what we're looking for is that initial horizontal velocity. We're basically looking for V2. So we're going to label the initial velocity in the X direction as V2. Now, in the X direction, there is no force exerted on the water as it flies through the air. And since there's no force, there's no acceleration. So this acceleration would be zero. But in the vertical direction, we have the force of gravity pulling the water down. And so the acceleration in the vertical or Y direction would be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Looking at the diagram, the horizontal displacement is illustrated as 0.6 meters. And the vertical displacement is negative 1 meter. Notice we're saying it's negative because vertically the water is moving in the downward direction. Now, we do not know the time in either direction, but we're actually going to be able to figure that out. And to do that, consider the following equation from kinematics. This is an equation you likely studied earlier. We are using y in this case, and so we're going to be plugging in information from our y direction. So for example, for the delta y, we noted that that was equal to negative 1, so we'll plug that in. The initial velocity in the y direction was zero, so this term drops out entirely. And then we continue plugging in for acceleration, we have negative 9.8 multiplied by t squared. So now what we'll do is multiply both sides of the equation by 2, so that we can cancel out this 1 half. And then we'll divide by negative 9.8, and then take the square root. And when you do that, you will find that the time required for the water to fall that 1 meter distance is approximately 0.452 seconds. Now the good news about finding the time is that once you have calculated the time in the y direction, you can also fill that in for the x direction because they are the same value. So we will put in 0.452 seconds into our chart. Now remember, we're trying to find v2. This is going to be relatively easy now because all we need to do is use that same equation, but this time in the x direction. And what's nice about this equation is that it contains an acceleration term, but in the x direction, the acceleration was zero. So this entire term drops out, and then we can fill in our delta x, which was 0.6 meters. We're looking for that initial velocity. Remember, we symbolize the initial velocity in the x direction as v2, and then the time we just computed, so we can plug that in. Now, dividing both sides of this equation by 0.452 shows us that v2 is approximately 1.33 meters per second. And that's fantastic, because if we go back and look at the equation we derived from Bernoulli's equation, we can now easily calculate the height. We're going to go ahead and plug in the V2 and G. And when you simplify that, you will get a height of exactly 0 0.09 meters. And then if your homework system wants the answer to be reported in centimeters, we can do a quick conversion. We all know that 1 meter is equivalent to 100 centimeters. When we multiply by that conversion factor, the meters cancel, and we end up with 9 centimeters. And that indeed is the final answer to the question.